All right, Dominic. I think the pad coverage down low looks good. I would just like to see a little more spread in the arms. Just feel like your elbows are locked in. Well, your elbow is locked in on your glove hand side. So we can spread our arm a little bit there, get a little more coverage with our glove. Sticks on the heel. Not a, I'm not terribly concerned with that. Um, would like to see the blocker a little bit more forward in front of the body. That arrow is indicating forward. What that's going to do is shrink this little tiny hole above, uh, below the blocker um, that basically cuts down the aerial angle again. Bring that, that blocker hand forward. Glove hands spread out a little bit, and I think we can we can live with the stick being as it is, as long as we're still mobile with it. Going back to the post, let's make sure we're not pushing outside the post. We want to snap this ankle right here. I mean, you got a great snap right to it there, but you want to get it inside the post. Always go inside the post. So let's see how we handle the shots here. Initially, and, and a lot of times I see this very common when we take uh, you know a view of the butterfly and their pres the, the movement and the presence of their hands without a shot, and then we introduce a shot, things often change. Here they go. You get to the middle. Watch how you lower your center of gravity. Look where the hands go. Bl blocker double coverage. Stick severely on its heel now. And glove also getting lower. So... We actually pull up. You can see your elbow is going to bend. You're going to pull that blocker up a little bit. Look at that. Just opens a window there. And then we react down a little bit too late. So hand placement, it's crucial. Even at your size, we got to make sure we're maximizing the net space and efficiently covering the net, not having any holes or leaving anything uh, uncovered because we're, you know, having some double coverage in our stance. Okay, I'd like to see you trap this one right to your uh, midsection. If we can drop our chin a little bit more over the shot, bring both hands in to really trap this puck to your midsection, kind of hug the puck in, and don't let it out. I would, I would ideally like to see that. All right, and the last one here, just kind of waved at it with the glove, and you can see, again, it's the, the hands sinking low. And, and this is why we look at the film like this. You can see you have a tendency when the shot is being loaded up on, you drop your hands. And our glove now is kind of pocket facing down here. That's going to create a lot of movement, unnecessary movement that we have to make just to get to this puck. And the shot's about well on its way, probably more than halfway, three quarters of the way to you before we start to move it in a direction to catch with. And ultimately... We end up making more of a blocking save than a, excuse me, blocking save than a, a clean catch. So, um, you know, it's small details, but a lot of it's in your hands, and, and and that's the thing with typically we see with bigger goalies, they can get everything down low because they got their pads there to cover it. It's usually shots above the pad. Um, you know, the, the goalies of your size, they, they're built on a blocking frame, and we just try to get in front of pucks, but we still have to remember we have to have active hands, and we still have to track pucks accordingly. So let's work on focusing on the release of the stick, but also being conscious of where we're placing our hands uh, as we load up for a shot. Let's try not to dip them too low, but rather push them out more forward in front of the body.